Hello and welcome. Today we have with us a very special guest, Shormishta Mohanty. She is the founder and uh, co-editor of Almost Island. Thank you very much. Uh, and this, of course, is part of the series of interviews we've been doing on independent publishing in India. So, Shurmishta, could you please tell us first about Almost Island? This began 10 years back. So, a little bit about the initial beginnings. Well, we be began it initially as an online journal, as you know. Um, and then very quickly, I had this thought that it's all right to have conversations online. I mean publishing texts from different parts of the world online is, is a very fruitful dialogue. But real dialogue is also necessary with writers sitting face to face before each other. And luckily, I managed to get some funding and we did the first Almost Island Dialogues actually at the end of 2006. Um, and it worked beautifully and I was also determined to make it intimate. I was not interested in doing any kind of a literary festival mm -hmm. and uh, that's really how it began. Right. Uh, with the Almost Island Dialogues and even with the journal and later the books that you brought out, there seems to be an emphasis on, on this, on a certain amount of intimacy that is small and doesn't have the kind of aura or grandeur of say a lit fest, etc., which has come up very recently, actually, it's in in India. Yeah. So, within how do you place Almost Island within this kind of literary map in India? I think we stand outside it. Right. That's what I would say, and I'm happy that we stand outside it because, as I said recently in in one of the interviews I did, um, you know, writing is not a performance. So no writer is going to talk about their process or about their life to an audience of 500 people mm -hmm. and in 15 minutes, which is the kind of time and space that these big writing festivals give you. So in contrast, when you have a very intimate space, we've had, for example, Beidou talking to us about his life. Uh, it was very, very moving. He spoke for three hours. Uh, we've had Laszlo Krasnohorkai, the Hungarian writer, talking about his life, extremely moving. And it's as if they're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, actually, you know. And there's an atmosphere of great trust. So people speak truly and genuinely. There's no uh, glamour about it. It doesn't have to do with name and fame because these are writers we've invited because we have read their entire body of work and we really admire them. We don't care if they've won the Nobel or if no one knows them. Mm -hmm. We care that we admire their work. Right. And I'm sure they feel the same way when they come to the dialogues. There's uh, something that interesting that uh, Vivek said during the dialogues, which uh, for, for our viewers who may not know this, the dialogues got over like day before yesterday. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, and on the final day, I think he said something important. He said that it's it's uh, our way of looking at the world, but it's also but it's our view of the world as well. So standing, so standing in one in place, one place yeah. right? Standing in one place and looking at the world. Yeah. So uh, how do you define this? Because it's interesting that a lot of writers you bring are, of course, Indian writers from various Indian languages as well as their translators. But also, there's a very international focus. It's it's. It's a kind of merger of uh, what now is now gets called world literature. So, when how did you think that this this would be the framework for the dialogues where we'll have a s various writers of of, mm -hmm. of of several kinds? I think you know when we started the journal, one of the things I'd said in my editorial is that geography is very important to me. I don't believe that things are that globalized actually. I don't believe that we can live in New York and in Delhi. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, countries and cultures, even till today, are extremely different. Living in Delhi is not the same thing as living in London. The, the visceral experiences are different. The emotional experience is different. The intellectual experience is different. So I was very clear that Almost Island is going to be a journal 
which is rooted in the geography of India, but reaching out to the world and being receptive to it, mm -hmm. you know. So, which is why every single dialogue is in India. And we have, I see it as a meeting of Indian writers with international writers. Mm -hmm. They are coming here, which means they are also receiving something of the ethos of our civilization as they speak. Very often, you know, we didn't do it this time simply because our cities have become impossible, but most dialogues, we've taken them. Mm -hmm. We've been uh, together to say the Qutub Minar or together to Old Delhi, to the Jama Masjid. So as we are talking, they're also receiving bits of what our culture is, where we come from. I think place is very, very important. Right. Even though people don't seem to think so anymore, just because everyone has a cell phone and a computer mm -hmm. doesn't make people similar. I'd like to talk a little bit about the books as well, because the dialogues, of course, is, uh, is a very important aspect of this. But uh, why, why did you feel the need to actually enter um, like publishing physical books? Um, and could, could you tell us the fascinating story of bringing uh, Adil Jasawala back into the picture almost after, I think, I think actually after 30 years. 30 years. I think that, you know, we got into books not really thinking of ourselves as publishers because one thing that I say whenever I talk about us publicly is, you know, the most important thing to remember is that Vivek and I are writers. And write, and this is an endeavor by writers. It's not an endeavor by literary organizers, which is a completely different thing. So we feel very deeply about what we do. So we just thought, well, why not do books once in a while that the mainstream will never do? And we all know that the Indian publishing mainstream is, you know, mm -hmm. really beyond hope as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I don't know, but we got to thinking about Adil. I knew that Adil had been writing even though he hadn't published and, you know, I thought why not begin with him? It would be a wonderful and significant beginning to publish one of our best poets who actually has been in some ways ignored by the publishing industry. So um, I asked Adil and he said, he would just think about it for a couple of weeks. But I think in a few days he called me and he said, let's go out for coffee. And we did meet for coffee and he said, I'd like you to do the book. And I remember saying to him, are you sure? Because maybe you want to wait for a penguin or a random house. And he said, I know what you and Vivek will do for this book will be much more than what anyone else will do. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know, really, that's our that's our debut in in publishing with others book, which, as you know, was you know really quite a big hit. Mm -hmm. And um, more than anything else, you know, the process because Vivek and I are writers, it makes the book publishing process a very rigorous one. Mm -hmm. So when we did others book, we sat for, in Bombay, the three of us, for a few days. We went over every single poem in the manuscript, you know, talking about it, discussing it, editing it. And that's how the manuscript got prepared. I mean, of course, Adil, it was his book and he had he made the final decisions. But the process was a very rigorous one. The same thing with Magad, translated by Rahul Soni. He came to Bombay. We sat with him. We went over every poem and there were major changes in the translation and he went back to work and then finally you know we got we got a, a manuscript that we thought was worth publishing. Shramisht I do want to know what uh, is is Almost Island the entire endeavor behind it uh, I mean there is of course a positive vision that you have a particular vision and you want to pursue that but is it in some ways also a reaction to uh, the publishing conditions uh, across the world and in India? I think, yeah, you've hit, you've hit not the nail on the head, but a nail on the head for sure. I mean, I didn't, you know, one should never begin things from a reaction, I think. 
you know, at least I'm not made like that. So I began it because I wanted to do it, but I think subconsciously there was a kind of anger. There was a kind of anger at uh, the way literary festivals are run. Although when I began, mind you, even Jaipur was not such a big festival. It's just become bigger and every city has a festival now. But a reaction to a kind of uh, commercialization of literature, especially Indian literature in English, where we're reading more about advances and foreign publishers rather than actually what the work is how good it is, how worthwhile it is, you know. And I really got terribly fed up of all of that. And I felt, at least in the English language, which is the field I work in, mm -hmm. we have to have something which is a more serious endeavor. So in that sense, yes, I think it was a reaction. And I think it's interesting, you know, Shorodeep, that I don't know of any single publisher in Delhi who's ever attended our event which I think says something, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I don't right. think that they want to attend events which are um, absolutely non-glamorous and dead serious mm -hmm. and where you can't network. And I'm saying all this publicly, as you can see, because I really don't care. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the truth. I do want to know what are you planning in the future? Uh, what, what what are the plans apart from the regular dialogues that we know will happen next year as well? Are there some some other things that you have in mind? The first thing that uh, I want to say is that, you know, I want to because we've done ten years of dialogues. I want to do something new with these dialogues. Mm -hmm. I want to turn them in a different direction. So I don't know what that direction is. I'm just mulling things over. So there will be a change of some kind. Uh, as far as books are concerned, we're not going to do anything next year because we did two this year, as you know, Ranjani Morali's uh, debut book and uh, Sergio Shefek's novel. Um, but I think very likely our next book project will be an India-China project because we've done three India-China Writers Dialogues and we're doing a fourth one next year, which will be uh, in fact in China, not here. So I think after that, we're going to start getting a book ready about the dialogues, writings from the dialogues. Um, so that's definitely the next book project. I do want to ask uh, this, I, I've noticed and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I've, I've noticed that there is a certain sense of trying to understand cultures which is outside of the Anglo-American um, establishment. So there is this uh, thing with uh, India, China, this time you had Mohammed Menis. So is, is this a conscious effort to sort of build something outside of that framework? Absolutely, because I think I've been, uh, you know, uh, we've been way too affected by the Anglophone world, okay? And I'm not just talking about of course, the huge impact and fractures of colonization, mm -hmm. but then after that, the American influence. And to me, it's a very pernicious influence because, especially in the novel, I mean, I don't think we've been able to break out of a very old-fashioned 19th century way of building the novel. And I think that's because we've always been under this kind of blinding influence of the English novel or even the American novel, which is heavily linear, narrative-oriented, not very philosophical or reflective. So personally, as a writer, I don't, I have always been looking for newer ways. So that was one reason. And the other thing is just, you know, politically and culturally. I mean, why should we stay within that ambit only because we are also speakers of English, you know? Uh, so I want to move to other areas like Eastern Europe, for example, Latin America, uh, Japan, China, you know, all those areas. Um, the other thing I'll say, and this may be controversial, but this is something I deeply feel. It may or may not be a fact. But I think that literature that comes out of a great deal of civilizational pain is a very significant literature. And I don't see that in the Anglophone world. Yeah. 
and I'm, I'm drawn to that kind of literature that is born from trauma and suffering. Uh, think about Raul Zurita and his experience in Chile, Bedao, you know, so many of these people, the African cultures. Uh, Mohamed Benis has been talking about the whole influence of France and Morocco, what has happened to the Islamic world. Mm -hmm. So I think I have, a, I have a great respect and I'm deeply moved and inspired mm -hmm. by much of the literature that comes from these worlds. It's interesting because that you work in English and yet you're, you want to move away from that particular uh, sphere of influence. But I will talk a little bit about your books. And this, of course, uh, for our viewers, this is uh, Shormishta's novel, Five Movements in Praise. Actually, I, I don't know if I can directly call it a novel. It's true. So, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but you'll have to read it. But I mean, it's really truly spectacular. These books are made, and I can see that there's a lot of effort, and I'm sure a lot of discussion that goes into what kind of paper we need. Sure, how, sure. How could you take us through the process of like creating that physical book? Um, I think each book requires a different kind of physicality mm -hmm. and with my own book uh, it required certain things because as you know I have miniature paintings in it, I have photographs. So you need a certain kind of paper which will not have any show through. Uh, so we've used a very thick Italian paper here. The margins are again because you know um, I have a lot of dense prose, I have uh, I have very long paragraphs, long sentences. So I always work, even when I'm working on the computer, with a 1.5 gap between my lines. And we've kept that here. Okay. And the wide margins are also required, you know, for a kind of rest and a breathing space. If you had, you know, a completely edge-to-edge -edge margin, you would feel very oppressed. Mm -hmm. So that's... and and. You know, we, uh, Itu Chaudhary, who's designed this book, and myself discuss this a lot. And that's how we came to the form of the book. And the cover, because, you know, before when I've published uh, my work with uh, other publishers, they're always very worried about the marketability of the cover. And it should be very colorful, mm -hmm. not just one tone. And we've gone against all that here because what I wanted was the kind of indigo that you see in miniature painting, you know, which suggests night, you know, the night yeah. in which Radha and Krishna travel towards each other. So Itu got that. He was able to actually get that tone. Yeah. So, yeah, every book, Sergio's book was designed by Siddharth Chatterjee, another wonderful designer. And... Uh, when you read the book, you will see why the cover is very apt, you know. Again, not flashy, recessive, but there are, it's quite a dynamic cover in its own way. So, and the poetry books will require a different kind of thing. I mean, when we did Adil's book, uh, Itu decided to make it long because most of Adil's poems were very long. So even the book yeah. is a, a long book. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as you'll see, even with Adil's book, Itu decided to make it long because the poems were long. Mm -hmm. And so he actually created a very unusually vertical sort of book. Mm -hmm. So, and we asked Adil what color did he see on the cover. And I remember he said that he saw a terracotta kind of color. And so Itu got right, that. Right. Shomishta, we wish you all the very best. Uh, we've admired your work for... For, for quite a long time at the Indian Cultural Forum, and we are very happy to have you here. All the very best for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching, and um, be sure to watch some of the other interviews in the same series. You will find the links in the description to this video. Thank you very much for watching.